Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Sige po, magpatuloy po tayo sa presence ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, patuloy po kaming nagpapakumbaba sa iyong imahe, O Lord God. Patuloy po kami, O Lord God, na lumalapit sa iyo. Maraming salamat, Lord, na sinamahan mo kami ngayong araw na to. And maraming salamat na nagpapatuloy ka. And Father God, we desire for more. Lord, we are hungry for more, Father God. Lord, we want to be able to feel you. We want to be able, Father God, to experience you and to encounter you deeper today, Panginoon. Lord, sa pamamagitan ng iyong mga salita, may we clearly see you, may we clearly feel you, Father. Maramdaman ka po sana namin, O Lord God. Hindi lang po, O Lord, sa aming soul, sa aming emotion, Father God. But tunay nga, Lord, that you will be manifested, Lord, in our midst, in the Spirit, Father God. Maraming maraming salamat sa you, Lord. Lord, we know that you have a special plan for us today. We know, Father, that you want to speak to us today. We know, Father, that you want to talk to us today, O Lord. Therefore, Father God, with a humble heart and with a humility, Father God, Lord, with a receptive heart, allow us to receive your message, allow us to understand, allow us, Father God, na maintindihan po namin, Father God, yung lahat ng gusto mong marinig namin ngayong araw na to. Father, maraming salamat po sa iyong salita. Sabi mo nga po, O Lord God, na ang iyong salita, Father God, ay mas matalas, mas matalim, Father God, kaysa sa isang uh, patalim, O Lord God, that is double-bladed, that is double-edged, Father God. And sometimes, Father, in our walk with you, we needed this, O God, to be reminded, O God. Maraming salamat, Lord, that your word is for our sake to rebuke us, to teach us, to train us, to open our eyes. And Father, thank you. Lord, ayaw po namin na matapos itong araw na to, na hindi kami nababago, na walang napapabuti sa aming kalagayan, especially Lord, sa aming standing with you. Kaya Lord, Holy Spirit, we invite you to be our teacher. We invite you to deliver your message clearly, crisp and sound. Lord, that message that can change us, that message that can better us. Father, as for your servant, I continue to humble myself down, Lord. I continue, Father, na nagpapasakop sa'yo. I pray, Father God, for the sanctifying blood of your son, Jesus, na siya po yung bumalot sa akin, na siya po, O Lord God, yung magtago sa akin, O Lord, upang sa ganun, ikaw lamang po ang tanging maitaas, ikaw lamang po yung tanging makita, ikaw lamang po yung tanging makpakinggan, Father God. I am just but your mere vessel and instrument, Father, and it is my personal prayer that I find and I may find justice on the work that you have set me here for to stand here this morning. Father, we take authority over all the works of the enemy and we rebuke any disturbances, any distractions, anything, O Lord God, that will inhibit us from receiving your works this morning. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Nakahabol, Ate Abilina. Amen po. Uh, ang nabli-bless ako sa buhay ni Ate Abilina. Talagang uh, mag-aaral kang mag-drive, Ate. Ha? Huh? Mag-aaral kang mag-drive, Ate, para kwan? Yun, kailangan ma-warm up yung sasakyan ng church. Ikaw na ang mag-uwi para hindi ka nahihirapang maglakad. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Though we are few, sabi nga ng uh, encouragement ni Kuya Alan kanina, we are surrounded by multitudes. Amen? And the most importantly, the Holy Spirit is with us and the Holy Spirit is around us. Amen po. Mga kapatid, 
it is not only that I was so blessed with our message this morning. This is yung extension po nung napag-usapan natin nung, nung isang linggo. Uh, it was uh, post last week dahil sa uh, birthday celebration ni Zep. Yung message natin last time was fitting para sa mga bisitang dumating. And i-continue natin. And I was just some... Um, uh, when I first meditated the word, um, yung, yung word na ibinigay ng ating Panginoon, as opposed to when I meditating it now, kumbaga, there is a tweak. And I was so blessed. I was so blessed because number one, I was so rebuked. Amen. I was so blessed because I was so rebuked, mga kapatid. And it is my prayer that we too will be rebuked. Amen. And if we are rebuked, mga kapatid, it is not because we are not good enough for the Lord. If we are rebuked by the word of the Lord, it is not because that we are a sinner. Well, we are a sinner by default. But if we are rebuked by the word of the Lord because the Lord loves us and the Lord wants us to inline ourselves with Him. Amen po. So mga kapatid, if you have your Bible... Please open it with us in First uh, Samuel chapter 30. Um, uh, by the way, maraming salamat sa buhay ng ginamit ng Panginoon this morning. And once again, to all who are joining us online, we are blessed that you are able to spend this day with us. Amen po mga kapatid. Sa First Samuel chapter 30, if we quickly have a recap mga kapatid, yung message last time. Um, sino pong nakakaalala ng message last time? Can we remember it? What was the message about last time? Sino po yung nakakaalala about David? Encouraging ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Encouraging ourselves in the Lord, mga kapatid. Strengthening ourselves in the Lord. And 1 Samuel chapter 30, natutunan po natin last time, we learned last time that David encountered a very difficult and a very challenging moment situation po sa kanyang buhay. Amen? David ay humarap po siya sa napakalaking dagok, napakalaking pagsubok during the time of his life, mga kapatid. Amen? And doon nakita natin that while David and his men were away, the Amalekites, yung kanilang enemy, came and they ransacked their place, their community called Ziklag. Amen, mga kapatid? And what they have done, they burned Ziklag down to ashes, sinunog nilang lahat, wala silang itinira, and they capture all their families, all their wives. Remember, David, together with 600 men, and these 600 men, they have their own families. David alone has two wives. How much more those other men? Others probably have two, three, four, but I'm not telling that that is acceptable. Amen. And David, they have children. And all these mga kapatid, that community that they have built, mga kapatid, they were all captive, taken captive by the Amalekites. And they were all disheartened. And the Bible says that David's worst moment is about to become worse or more worse. By how? Because the men, mga kapatid, plan to stone David. Because this, his men, the 600 men, plan to stone David because they are so frustrated. They are so disheartened. They plan to stone David, mga kapatid, because sinisisi nila si David. But it is during this situation that if we have read in verse 6, in verse 6b, it says in there that, But David strengthened. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen, mga kapatid. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Do we not have ano, opportunity to... Um, Flash it there, so that others who has no Bible can uh, follow us, follow with us. No, mga kapatid, in that very difficult moment, the Bible says that 
David strengthened himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And we learn, mga kapatid, that after David found strength in the Lord his God, that was the only time that he came and inquired of the Lord. That was the only time that he came and asked for direction. That was the only time that he prayed for instruction, mga kapatid. And in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 6 up until 8, it says in here, And David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? And the Lord responded to David. The Lord says, Pursue them. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in your rescue. So mga kapatid, natutunan po natin sa buhay ni David that in coming to the Lord, how many times a day that we come to the Lord? In coming to the Lord with our prayers, in coming to the Lord with our petitions, in coming to the Lord with our cry, in coming to the Lord with our innermost desires. First, my dear brothers and sisters, we need to align ourselves. We need to align our lives. We need to align our hearts. We need to align our faith in the Lord. Amen? Well, to be honest, nothing can stop you to come to God anytime, any moment. Nothing can stop you coming to God, crying to God without first realigning yourself to the Lord. Nothing can stop you do that. But the question is, would God answer? Sasagot kaya ang Panginoon? Sasagot kaya ang Panginoon, mga kapatid? And we saw the example of Paul. Nakita nat Saul, I mean, nakita natin yung example ni King Saul, mga kapatid. 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 5 to 6, that King Saul came to the Lord without first aligning himself. King Saul came for an instruction to the Lord without first aligning himself. And what did the Lord say? Mga kapatid, remember last time? The Lord said, nothing. The Lord did not respond to King Saul. So how many of us, mga kapatid, na we have prayers and the Lord is not answering it. And we still go and encourage ourselves that maybe uh, it is not yet today. Maybe the Lord's answer is not yet today. Or could it be that those unanswered prayers were a result of us not aligning ourselves first with the Lord? Mga kapatid, in James chapter 4, verse 3, it says in there that when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motive. When you pray, you do not receive because you are not aligned with me, the Lord says. Your motive is not aligned with me, the Lord says. Your heart is not aligned with me, the Lord says. Amen? We have clearly seen yung example ni King David who before coming to the Lord aligned himself and the Lord gave him an answer. And the opposite, King Saul, where he came to the Lord without first aligning himself and the Lord did not answer him. The Lord was quiet in his prayers, mga kapatid. So I want to encourage us today. 
that next time, align our motives with the Lord. Align our hearts with the Lord. Align our desires with the Lord. Align our life along with the will of the Lord, mga kapasid. And I will assure you, and I assure you that God will work and God will answer and God will instruct you and God will reassure you of His promises. Amen, church? Are we in agreement to that? Hallelujah. So when David in verse 8 found strength in the Lord his God, when David aligned his motives, when David aligned his heart with the Lord, when David aligned his desires along with the will of the Lord, God gave him an answer. God gave him a promise. God gave him a calling, mga kapatid. And what is that answer? What is that promise? What is that calling? The Lord says, pursue them. Take over them. And you will succeed. Amen, church? If we continue from verse 9, Sabi niya sa verse 8, In David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue the raiding party? Will I overtake them? So ito yung prayer ni David. And the answer of the Lord, mga kapatid, the promise of the Lord, the calling of the Lord is, verse 9, the Lord says, Pursue them, and you will certainly overtake them, and you will succeed, in the rescue, mga kapatid. And David and his 600 men with him came to the Bezor ravine where some stayed behind. For 200 men were too exhausted to cross the ravine. But David and the 400 men continued there. Anyone church continued there? Pursuit. That's the number one promise of the Lord. That's the number one calling of the Lord for David, to pursue them. Amen, church? Number 11, verse 11. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a cake of a priest figs and two cakes of raisin. If you are this Egyptian, hi, and you are hungry and you are thirsty, and they gave you a cake with raisin, would you eat it or would you still not eat it? She hates raisin. <laughs> I remember there was a time I challenged her, I'll give you 50 pounds, eat raisin. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's how Hai does not like a raisin. Hallelujah. No? So sabi niya rito, part of a cake pressed figs and two cakes of raisin, he ate and he was revived. For he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, to whom do you belong? And where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekites, my master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Keritites in the territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb and we burned Ziklag. So sila pala, kasama siya. David asked him, Can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, Swear to me before God, that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. He led David down and there they were scattered. What do you call that, my dear brothers and sisters? David has now overtake them. Amen. If you are driving, if you are driving and you cannot see a car, you cannot overtake it. 
Only when you approach and you can see the car, that's the only time that you can physically overtake it. Amen. So the same thing that David was looking in the wilderness, where are these Amalekites? It was only up until that time when an Egyptian came and show where they are, and David went, and they saw where they are, that David received the second promise of the Lord, which is to overtake them. Amen. And, and uh, 16, he led David down, and there they were scattered over the country, eating, drinking, and rebelling, because the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistine and from the land of Judah. 17, David fought them from dusk until the evening of the next day. Wow. More than 24 hours battle. And imagine this is with sword and spear. Yun nga lang ilang minutes, one hour yung ating ano, uh, paintball. It was very tiring and exhausting. Diba? Very, very tiring and exhausting. How much more? More than 24 hours, wala kang ginagawa, kundi nagwawasiwas dyan. Wow. I could only imagine na some people, wala man siguro silang tama, like, just like this Egyptian, who is ill, who is hungry, who is thirsty, wala ka man sigurong tama, but you probably end up dying of exhaustion. But, it says in here, mga kapatid, David fought them from the dusk until the evening of the next day and none of them got away except 400 men who rode off in a camel and fled. And David recovered everything that the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives, nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else, they had taken and David brought everything back. And that is the third promise in calling of the Lord, which is to succeed. Amen. Mga kapatid, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, yung promise ng Panginoon, yung calling ng Panginoon kay David is to pursue them is to overtake them and to succeed, to be successful, mga kapatid. How about you? How about us? Tayo po kaya, mga kapatid. What is the promise of God that we are holding on to? What is the calling of God that we are holding on to? What is our innermost desire? Ano po yung pinaka pinakamimithi natin mga kapatid that the Lord is asking us to pursue to overtake and to succeed mga kapatid anyone let's ask some interactions anyone what is that innermost prayer that the Lord is calling you to pursue to take over and to succeed ate ani ano po yun anyone what is the innermost desire of your heart? Again, it's a very it's a very vast word. Obedience, love. Anyone? I know, Ati Abilina, yung at the moment yung makarating si uh, binata niya rito. Binata kasi <laughs> maraming <laughs> pagpipilian eh. <laughs> no? Sa atin po kaya Kuya Lando, ano, ano kaya yung pan? Yung innermost desire natin that the Lord is calling us to pursue, to, to overtake, and to take over. Anyone? Salvation? Salvation? Apat ngayon, na, na ano na natin yan. <laughs> Nahawakan na natin yan. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you are sitting here right now and you are not yet saved... I will contemplate. <laughs> kasi Brother Ramon, walang ano, bold enough na ano, anything, Brother Ramon. What is the innermost desire? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And how many more resonate that desire? I too cry for the Lord for that. 
And I believe that we all do. Amen? So mga kapatid, is the Lord calling us to pursue, to uh, take over, and to succeed sa ating family? People who are not here, and you know that you are concerned, is the Lord calling us for, for the unity of the family? For that reignition of love on that relationship, on that marriage relationship? Is the Lord calling all husband? Is the Lord calling all wife? Is the Lord calling all couples? Students, youth? Is the Lord calling all siblings, mga kapatid? To entrust our life to the Lord. Salvation, sabi ni Ken. Is the Lord calling us to ensure our salvation in the salvation of our household, mga kapatid? Or maybe some, the Lord is calling you to drop those jobs. The Lord is calling you to drop those overtime. If those jobs and overtime are taking your time from the service and taking your time from worshiping the Lord. Or probably in the other extreme, you want to leave those jobs and the Lord is calling you to stay on those jobs, to remain on those jobs, to persevere, na magsipag sa trabaho, na gawin kung ano yung tama at dapat sa trabaho because the Lord put you there to be His instrument. Because the Lord put you there to be His example, to be His light and salt sa iyong workplace, mga kapatid. Anyone? Is the Lord calling us or is the Lord promise us our own house? Or to some probably your second, your third, your fourth house maybe? Is the Lord calling you to pursue, conquer, and succeed on that brand new car? Ano na yun? OD. Hindi ako makatingin dun. Land Rover. <laughs> Amen. Who doesn't want to have an OD and Land Rover? Amen. We know that if we have an OD and a Land Rover, we know that we are blessed. Amen po. Amen. Hallelujah. As the Lord promised us a miracle, as the Lord promised us the impossible that even science cannot afford. Alam ko, it's not secret. May mga kapatid tayo dito na they have been praying for an offspring. They have been praying for the fruits of their love. And it seems that even with multiple attempts, uh, it is not succeeding. And if we are to rely on science, science says it is impossible. Science says it is not doable, mga kapatid. What is the Lord calling us? Student, is the Lord calling you to, to study hard? and to gain a degree. But I'm sure for all of us, sabi nga ni Brother Ramon kanina, the Lord is calling us to pray for a foundation, to start laying a foundation to what become a home of this church. Amen, church? Declaration of faith. For all of us, I'm sure that the Lord is calling us to grow in faith. For all of us, I'm sure that the Lord is calling us to increase in Him. For all of us, I'm sure the Lord is calling us to mature in obedience to Him. The Lord is calling us to solidify our commitment to Him. The Lord is calling us to be dependable, to be reliable to be consistent in our calling as a church leaders, as a ministers, as a member of the ministry, and as a member of the body of Christ. Amen, church. 
I'm sure that the Lord is calling us to grow our tiny, small Sior Church to become a Sior Church. Amen, Church! Mga kapatid, the Lord is calling us to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed. Amen, Church? So what are the promises in calling of the Lord in your life? Ano po yung mga pangako ng Panginoon? Ano po yung calling ng Panginoon sa inyong buhay? Yung mga dasal na iniiiyak nyo sa Panginoon. Maybe there are even cry, mga kapatid, na unbeknownst to your wife, unbeknownst to your husband, that it is between you in the Lord. That apart from you in the Lord, no one knows, no one can know. And that is probably where at it applies that when you come and discuss that with the Lord, that you go in your in your bedroom and you shut the door. That is probably the time when you tell your children that give me some moment, I'll just fix something. But in reality, you are there crying to the Lord. So what is that dealing? What is that promise? What is that calling that the Lord wants us, wants you to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed? Mga kapatid, meron po tayo, amen? Ako, marami. Meron po tayo. And what I want us to learn on today, mga kapatid, is I want us to have a glimpse. I want us to learn, matuto po tayo sa puso ni David. Matuto po tayo, mga kapatid, sa attitude ni David in dealing with these promises in calling of the Lord to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed in order for us na katulad ni Haring David, maging successful din tayo dyan sa promise na yan ng Panginoon. Maging successful din tayo dyan sa calling na yan ng Panginoon. Number one, sabi niya doon sa verse 9, when David received the promise, the calling of the Lord to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed. Verse 9, sabi niya rito, David and his 600 men with him came to the Veso Ribin where some stayed behind. What did David first do, mga kapatid? David, hindi po siya si Juan Tamad. David acted on it. Amen, church? David did not knew where the Amalekites run. Remember, it is a vast desert. The people of Israel got lost in that desert for 40 years. Imagine standing in the middle of the desert. If you look at your front, if you look at your back, if you look at the right, if you look at the left, wala kang makita. Just the desert. Some people here work in the Middle East, Kuya Lando. You could probably imagine standing in the end of the desert and you look everywhere and it's as if unending sand. You know, when I was in Israel and I was standing in the desert, you look far away and you look at the land and the sky met together. Di ba? Makikita mo yung langit at saka yung lupa nagmi-met together. That's how, and David doesn't know where did the Amalekites run. But still, by faith, David acted on it. Amen, church? Naghanap siya. Remember a few weeks ago when we had an incident, hindi natin alam kung saan tayo pupunta but we did not settle staying here and waiting for news. Naghanap tayo. Amen. Yung iba, nandun sa Aldi. Yung iba, nandun sa Kabila. Amen. We do not know where, but like David, mga kapatid, we acted on it. Amen, church. David worked on it. Although David did not knew, although David's men did not knew where to look, 
but naghanap sila. They work on it. They acted on it, mga kapatid. They mobilize. Kumilos po sila. David and his men, they did not just pray. They did not just meditate on the promise. They did not just claim and declare by faith, by faith, by faith, mga kapatid. Hindi po. David was very much aware dyan sa James 2.17 that says that faith without action is dead. So number one, mga kapatid, those innermost cry and desire and prayer that you have, mga kapatid, that the Lord is promising you to pursue, to succeed, and take over, mga kapatid. Yes, it is very good to cry and pray to the Lord like David did, but mga kapatid, David acted on it. Amen, church? You know the power that is being manifested dun sa favorite verse natin, Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mga kapatid, Why does Christ strengthen us again? Ano yung purpose? Bakit tayo ini-strengthen ni Christ? For us to be enabled to do all things. Amen. If you are not doing anything, why do you need strengthening? The Lord strengthen us in order for us to do all things, mga kapatid. Amen. So those cry, those calling, those promises of the Lord that the Lord is asking you to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed, mga kapatid, it is very good to apply faith in it, but it says that faith without action is dead. So start, mga kapatid. Amen. Start acting in faith. Start mobilizing. Amen, church. Amen. Yung isang pinsan dyan na uh, sabi nung last Friday is suffering. No? Yung isang pinsan dyan na naghihirap. It is very good to pray for them. But it's probably in right time to start acting and physically blessing them, mga kapatid. The second one, mga kapatid. In David's pursuit, they did not know what to do. They act on it. They mobilized. They went to find. And in second one, in David's pursuit, sa verse 11, sabi niya rito, in their pursuit, they found an Egyptian. Somebody repeat it with me. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him water to drink and food to eat and part of a cake pressed figs and two cakes of raisin. He ate and he was revived because this Egyptian was ill and his master left him for dead and he did not eat three days in three nights. And he is good for dead. Siguro, kung hindi siya nakita ni David, patay na siya. Amen, church. Kung hindi siya nakita ni David, patay na siya, mga kapatid. And David asked him, Whom do you belong and where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of Amalekites. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev and the Keritites in the territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb and we burned the Siklag. So mga kapatid, no? in their pursuit, not only that David acted on it by faith, not only David mobilized on it, but number two mga kapatid, David lived in the now. That's where the title of our message is. Namuhay po si David sa pangkasalukuyan. David lived in the present times, mga kapatid. David lived in the now. 
David has not gotten. David received a promise. Remember? David received a calling. And that promise, that calling is again to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed. And in his pursuit, and in his way of achieving that calling, that promise, mga kapatid, no? David has not gotten his family back. David has not gotten his resources back. He is on the way. He is on the process of pursuing, overtaking, and succeeding on the promises and calling of God. But in his way, mga kapatid, he happens to find an Egyptian. Not his family member. Not his friends. Not his relatives. Not, not an Israelite. Hindi niya kabayan. Because sometimes, yun palagi yung attraction natin. Yun yung drawing natin to help. We make sure na itong taong tinutulungan natin, kilala natin. We make sure na itong taong kila, tinutulungan natin, kamag-anak natin, kapamilya natin, kababayan natin. And if they are out of that, bayaan mo, may ibang tutulong. Mga kapatid, in David's pursuit of the promise of God, he happened to found an Egyptian. Mga kapatid. He happened to found an Egyptian. And itong Egyptian na to, mga kapatid, he is clearly dying. We agreed on that, that he is clearly dying. Ano po yung ibig sabihin nun, mga kapatid? That means he is no use to David. That means that he is no use to David. That means na sasabihin ni David, kung tutulungan ko ito, kung padidistorbo ako rito, anong mapapala ko? Busy ako. Time is an essence. The more faster we walk, the more na maaabutan namin sila. That is the calling of the Lord. I am chasing for that calling. I am chasing for that promise. I have no time for this Egyptian. I have no time for this situation. I have no time for this circumstance. To be honest, the Egyptian is good for dead. He is no use for David. To be honest, the Egyptian is just a distraction. It's just a disturbance. In David's pursuit of the promise. In David's pursuit of the calling. Interruption lang yan. I'm sure maraming mga kasamahan si David dyan na nag advice kay David na, David, just say it, God. Distraction lang yan. Disturbance lang yan. David, wag nating pansinin yan. David, we have a promise. We have a calling. We have a tomorrow to chase. But mga kapatid, David, the Bible says, David, Lived in the now. David lived in the present. He was so busy chasing for the promise of the Lord. He was so busy chasing for the calling of the Lord. But the Bible clearly says that David paused. David find some time. David offered a time. Mga kapatid, whatever those promises, whatever those cry that you are crying to the Lord, that the Lord is calling you to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed, the encouragement today, my dear brothers and sisters, is live in the now. Amen, church? Live in the now. Do we know that God is constantly working in our midst? The power of the Lord is constantly working in our midst. But sometimes we fail to acknowledge that. Sometimes we miss to acknowledge the daily little things because we are so focused in the future big things. Mga kapatid. Sometimes we fail to see the blessing of the Lord today. Because we are so focused on the promise and in the calling of tomorrow, mga kapatid. Ano yung encouragement ni Kuya Alan dito kanina? 
Matthew 6.34 ba yun, Kuya Alan? Ano yung encouragement? Do not worry for tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry for itself. There is already enough worry for today. Amen, church. Do not worry about tomorrow. Live in the now. David says, yes, I know that I am in pursuit of that promise. I know that I am in pursuit of that calling. But David said, I can live in the now. Give us today our daily bread. Was that not the prayer of Jesus that He taught us? Give us today our daily bread. Not just for next week, not just for next month. Give us in the now our daily bread. Amen, church. Our favorite verse, Lamentations 3:22 to 23. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every week, every morning. They are new every now. That makes His faithfulness great because His mercies are brand new every now, mga kapatid. Amen? Hallelujah. Live in the now. Live in the present. Blessing is not only during payday. Ano may sa council? Katapusan? Sa voyage? A gist. Blessing is not only during the end of the month or during a gist. The blessing is not only during birthdays, anniversary, and celebration. The blessing is not only when we receive new things. Palagi na nating sinasabi, every gising is a blessing. Every today is a blessing. Let us not fail to appreciate, to receive, and to acknowledge the blessing of the Lord today because we are so focused for the promise and calling of tomorrow, mga kapatid. No? David lived in the now. And I believe, mga kapatid, that David was tested by God. Though God gave David a promise, though God gave David a calling to pursue, to overtake, and to recover, although God gave David an instruction to pursue, overtake, and recover, but mga kapatid, God did not give David specific descriptions. He did not. And I believe that God tested David. David mobilized himself. Mga kapatid, little did he know that that Egyptian man dying that he found na baliwala sa kanya kung tutuusin, that Egyptian holds the description of how to conquer the Amalekites. That Egyptian holds the key on how to succeed in the promise of God. Mga kapatid, I believe that God tested David. What if David did not live in the now and he pursued and he continued to pursue and he continued to chase for that promise and calling of tomorrow. Siguro hanggang ngayon, pagpupunta tayo sa Israel, nandun pa rin si David naghahanap. How many of us in here, mga kapatid? How many of us in here that we, we cry to the Lord? That, Lord, show me the answer. Lord, give me the answer. Lord, show me the direction. How many of us in here cry to the Lord and say, Lord, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more, Lord. When in fact, the answer of the Lord is simply, live in the now. Look at your circumstance around. Look at the people around, that people 
that someone, that circumstance that you are avoiding holds instruction and description that answers your prayer. I believe, mga kapatid, that David was tested by God. Amen. The answer to David's prayer, the answer of, of David's calling, mga kapatid, is buried in this Egyptian man who is at first irrelevant, insignificant, Egyptian who did not lose his family, but he is losing his life. Egyptian, mga kapatid, who, who, who needed something that David has. And that is a small food and a small drink, mga kapatid. Imagine, one of David's greatest victory, one of, uh, one of the answer of David's greatest promise in calling, in winning against the Amalekites, rests on a piece of cake and a little drink. Mga kapatid, could it be na yung big dreams, yung big calling, yung big cry, could it be na yung, yung big, big desire nyo sa Panginoon, the answer of that is embedded on that small portion of give your tithes. Be a generous heart. To be honest, you know, I, I learned to the Lord when it comes to tithing. You don't have to follow the word of the Lord when it comes to tithing. You don't have to give 10%. Mga kapatid, you can give 20, 30. Walang bumipigil sa inyo. You don't have to give 10%. If you want to give 20, 30 to the Lord, then you will be blessed. Amen. Could it be, mga kapatid, na the answer to our prayer is nandyan lang, natatapakan natin? I remember this old adage story ng mga manilenyo. They come to the strawberry park, this strawberry farm, and they are walking around and they ask people, Hey boy, bata, asan dito yung strawberry tree? Little did they know na natatapakan na nila. They expect strawberry trees. Malaki. Say, bata, asan dito yung strawberry tree? Little did they know na natatapakan na nila because that strawberry trees. Small. So mga kapatid, could it be na the answer to our prayer, the answer to our cry, that unity of the family remains in the fact na that answer is what you have been neglected it all along, mga kapatid. Hallelujah. David did not just pass by this Egyptian, just like the, you know, yung priests in Levite sa New Testament, the good Samaritan. David did not just ignore and disregarded this Egyptian just like many of us would do. We will rush, we do not time. Mga kapatid, live in the now. David finds time to live in the now. David finds time to get a drink, to get a food, and give it to this Egyptian. And the Bible says that this Egyptian was revived. Amen. And little did David know that this Egyptian holds the key to the details of conquering the Amalekites. What I want to encourage us today, mga kapatid, no? what I want to encourage us today is for our eyes to be open. Do not use our current season as a reason. Do not use our current situations as an excuse to stop serving God. This is our common denominator. Pahinga na muna ako. Tsaka na lang muna ako. Next time na lang muna ako. Sa future na lang muna ako. But God wants you to serve Him 
now. Don't use our pain as an excuse not to live out our purpose. Don't use the fact that we are in college, that we are in university, that we are studying, that we cannot serve in the church. I can no longer serve because I got a new house. Yeah, kailangan magbayad. I can no longer serve because I am building a new house. I can no longer serve because I just got married. I can no longer serve because I just gave birth. I can no longer serve because I am ill. I am sick. I can no longer serve because it's far. Malayo na kayo. Malayo na ang distance. I can no longer serve because I am tired. I can no longer serve because I have holiday plans. To be honest, mga kapatid, believe me, deep inside my heart, I understand that. And that is reasonable. If only you are serving the pastor, if only you are serving the church. But we are serving God, mga kapatid. Amen. We are serving God. And in serving God, nothing is good enough reason to stop serving Him. Wala pong rason to stop serving the Lord. Mga kapatid. And that is our big mistake most of the time. That is what we usually do. In our way, to pursue the Lord's promise. In our way to pursue God's calling of to pursue, overtake, and succeed, mga kapatid. God, tell me more. Lord, reveal it to me more. How should I get the breakthrough in my life? But mga kapatid, the details of that direction lies in the now lies in the now, mga kapatid. Sabi ni Brother Ramon, and I believe all of us, we want our church to have a breakthrough. Mga kapatid, we want our church to have a breakthrough. The answer does not lies in the future. Let us to live in the now. The answer is not only lies in our meeting. It's not only lies on a Sunday or in a Friday or in a Wednesday meeting. You know what, mga kapatid? It lies in our knee. Lumuhod tayo now. The backbone, as, as of course na ang tao, the backbone of that ang tao is yung kanyang spine. Without your spine, a person cannot stand. With a weak spine, a person cannot stand. But in the church, the backbone of the church is prayer. We need to be kneeling and crying down now. A prayerless church will not grow. Even you inundate that with so much ability, talent, gifts, skills. A church cannot grow. A church cannot stand without kneeling in our knees. So we need to start kneeling in our knees and cry now, mga kapatid. So David living in the now, ministering to that Egyptian, leads him the key to pursue, overtake, and succeed. Leads him the key where the Amalekites are. How many of them are there? What weapons do you have? And most importantly, he became the guide, mga kapatid. And that only because David chose to live in the now. So that is the encouragement from this pulpit today sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. Do not live for the next. 
do not live for the next. Next time na lang, sa susunod na lang, no, let us live in the now, mga kapatid. Every one of us, to be honest, including me, every one of us has a next that we are pursuing. But you know what I found out, and I'm sure you found out too, that when you get to the next, there is another next. And when you get to another next, there is another Next, next when I get there, next when I can, next when I feel like it, next uh, kung may sasakyan na ako, next kung umiinit na ang panahon, next kung wala na ang COVID, baka magulat ka, wala na ang COVID pero may papalit naman. We need to serve the Lord now, mga kapatid. It is good to have next, but we need to live in the now, mga kapatid. Amen. Life is happening now, and we are needed now, mga kapatid. Wag po na sana nating i-ignore yung now. Wag po sana nating i-ignore yung now and be assured na mayroong pa namang susunod. Mayroon pa namang susunod. Because once you reach that next, mga kapatid, there will be another next. And there will be another next. But the next thing you will do is you might end up missing the opportunity or missing all the opportunity to serve God. And the painful thing is you might not be given another opportunity. Do you think that if David did not live in the next, would he have another opportunity if that Egyptian died? Mga kapatid, the people of Israelites, because they did not live in the now, they got lost in that wilderness for 40 years. 40 years really signifies the span of your life. The Lord in His Word says, there will be resurrection of the dead. To those who were righteous, they will resurrect in the presence of the Lord. And to those who were unrighteous, they will resurrect in the eternal suffering. And if you have a consolation that, uh, don't worry, if I will go to hell and suffer in hell, then Satan will become my master. Whatever Satan, the devil has promised you, do not believe. Because when you get to hell, both of you will burn. Satan and all the demons and all the disobedient angels, they will also burn. There will be no boss in hell. You will all cry. Even Satan will cry and even Satan will cry. Mga kapatid. Mga kapatid, would you allow you living in the next to forfeit that promise of the Lord? To forfeit that calling of the Lord? Mga kapatid, let us be encouraged. Live in the now. We have calling, we have promises of the Lord beginning from our own self, beginning from work, beginning from our own household, our uh, wives, husband, our children, our parents, our siblings, beginning in our local community and as a common beginning in our church. Mga kapatid, there is a bigger thing from all this. The Lord is coming back. The Lord is coming back. If you so look forward in the future, baka magtaka ka, the Lord has already returned and you are still there pursuing the future and the calling. Mga kapatid, live in the now because your now will fulfill the promise of the Lord for your future. Amen. Amen, church.
Let us stand up and let us uh, have our communion. Let's bring our music team. Wala po yung inallocate natin to ano? To the offering this weekend. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drink of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks brings judgment to themselves without recognizing the body of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for our dearly beloved sisters, Sister Annie and Sister Hodia. Thank you, Lord, that they are that you are utilizing them today to be your vessel and to be your instrument, Father God, in handing over this bread that symbolizes your body and this drink that symbolizes your blood. Lord, give them a clean hands so that as they distribute these elements. It's as if, Father, we directly received them from you. Lord, we thank you for the bread and this drink, Father God. Bless them in this row form, Father. Cause it and let it be, Father God, that as we partake them today as a community, Lord, let your will be done. Let your purposes be fulfilled, Father, for instituting this communion for us to observe. In Jesus' name. Amen. And while the music team uh, minister, let's come to the Lord and open our heart to the Lord and just make a small account of how we have been living our lives and to ready ourselves in receiving the body of Christ.
Let us lift the bread. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. That on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the bread. Hallelujah. Let us tip, tip up the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's take the cup. Hallelujah. Let's receive the Lord, church. Hallelujah, Lord. We receive you, Father. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much, Father God, for your revelation. Thank you, Father God, for being in one with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to close in prayer before we return to the music. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Father God, for encouraging us today. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your hearts to us today, O God. Thank you, Father, for that promise. Thank you, Father, for that calling, O Lord God. Thank you for teaching us through the life of your servant, David, that before we come to you, that before we come and cry to you and receive our instruction, you receive your promise in calling, that we must first align ourselves in you, that we must first align our motives in you, that we must first align our hearts in desire along with your will, Father God. And having been aligned, Lord, we will receive instructions from you. We will receive the promise from you. We will receive the calling from you, Father God. But thank you, Lord, for teaching us that after receiving this promise, that we need to act on it by faith. That after receiving this promise, Father God, that we need to do our part and we need to do our share in faith, Lord. And thank you, Father, that ultimately, we will not fail to live in the now. We will not fail to appreciate the small blessings of tomorrow, Father God, while we are on route, while we are in pursuit of the bigger blessing and promise and calling of tomorrow. Thank you so much, Lord. We truly indeed are ministered by you. We truly indeed, Father, learn from you, Lord. Our prayer, Father God, is help us Holy Spirit, help us transform our lives that we may be able to apply these things that we learn from you. Transform our lives that we may be able to be empowered, that we may be able to receive fully the full measure, Father God, of your promise, of your calling for us to pursue, to overtake, and to succeed, O God, in our lives independently, in our lives corporately as a family, in our lives as a church that belongs to your body. Thank you so much, Father God. Lord, thank you that you will continue to, to reveal your message, reveal your words towards each and every one, Lord. Even as we finish today, even as we uh, complete our service today, Holy Spirit, continue to lead us and guide us towards that path that leads to righteousness in life. Thank you that this week ahead will be a week filled with abundant blessing, filled with growth, filled with testimony, filled with power, Father God. And bring us all back next week together with the brothers and sisters who are not able to come today that we may honor you, that we may worship you, that we may lift your name on high. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right. God is good. God is good.